Greetings guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another Monday video. Now Mondays, I like to sit down and do my makeup while I talk about something that is heavy on my mind. The topic that's been brought to my attention this week is mental health among teens and parents disregarding it or not believing it or refusing to acknowledge it, talk about it, or do anything about it. This really upsets and frustrates me a lot because mental health is like such a big issue and it is so overlooked and it is not taken anywhere near seriously enough. And so I wanted to talk about this uh, because I think it is super important. To start us off, I wanna talk about some statistics of mental health among teens and suicide rate and all that sort of stuff. So globally, approximately 20% of all teenagers struggle with at least one mental illness. That is one in five teenagers struggle with at least one mental illness. That is a very, very large number. So the idea that someone would be lying about that is already like quite slim because that is like a lot of people struggling. On top of this statistic of 20% of all teens having mental illness, the suicide, the youth suicide rate is just increasing year by year to the point in 2018, the youth suicide in the UK alone increased by 23.7%. That is a ridiculous, a ridiculously steep incline. In one year, 23.7% more teens committed suicide. It was over 700 people under the age of 25 killed themselves in the UK. And that is so sad. And I feel like it's something that's like way more easily preventable than we're making it. The fact that the numbers are so high and there are still parents out there who refuse to acknowledge when their child says they're struggling is just so sad because like, the why would your child lie about that? Why would your child over exaggerate? If they're struggling, there's literally no downside to you sitting down and asking if they're okay. There is no downside to you talking to them about it and just ensuring them, assuring them that you love them and that it is okay. If you're a parent and you say to your child, I don't believe you, you're exaggerating, you're making it up, all you're doing is pushing them away and pushing them further into this idea that, you know, they're gonna be invalidating themselves and telling them they're making, telling themselves that they're making it all up and that they're over exaggerating and that they don't feel comfortable like they can talk to you. And it's just this big awful cycle where it's pushing people away and making them feel ashamed and embarrassed for what they're going through and like they can't talk to anyone and it's isolating and it just pushes them further and further to the edge. If people are more open about it and willing to talk about it, the suicide level, the suicide rate would like drop. If people felt like they were able to talk about it and didn't feel ashamed and felt safe and supported and less alone, they wouldn't be killing themselves at the rate that they are. And it's just so sad because so many people aren't believed and so many people just feel so alone and like it's all made up and that it's never going to get better because they don't have anyone to turn to. They don't have anyone to talk to about it. On top of suicide rates, we have self-harm. Now, 17% of all people will self-harm at some point during their lives with the average person first self-harming at 13 years old which is so so sad it is so sad that like people get to this point where you know you just feel so alone and so isolated and so you're in so much pain that that's something that you that you turn to and it's just not talked about enough <laughs> like it's so isolating since 2009 there has been a 50 percent increase rate of women under 18 self-harming and it's still something that's so stigmatized and you know everyone feels really ashamed of it and it's like it's not talked about and it's made fun of and it's this big scary awful thing and it, particularly if your parents like aren't listening to you and aren't believing you and telling you that it's not okay and when your parents get mad at you and a lot of people turn to self-harm as like an outlet you know, like it's it's just all built up and you feel like you can't put it anywhere else and you can't talk about it and there's nowhere to exert all this pain. You don't have anywhere to release it. You can't talk to anyone. You don't want to upset anyone or hurt anyone. 
so instead you hurt yourself and you take it out on yourself and it's just such an awful awful thing and it's so isolating and I'm smiling it's not funny this is just how I cope so I don't cry I smile okay okay but it's such an isolating thing and if people are more open to talking about mental health and taking it more seriously the self-harm rates again would go down because there's an outlet People just like turn to these awful things as like an outlet, as an escapism, as a way to just remove themselves from their emotions because they're too overwhelming to deal with. If there's nowhere to let your emotions out, sometimes they build up to this point where you, you just explode and you take it out on yourself and you do such drastic things. And it's so terrible and it's so sad. And I think with like, you know, the internet is an amazing place and I, I love I love the internet and there are so many supportive communities on there, but with so many young people on the internet, you know, there's obviously like a lot of stuff that goes on. And I think people sometimes like learn about what self-harm is through the internet, which I think is why it has increased by 50% um, since 2009. Personally, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would have known about self-harm and that that was a thing people did if I didn't have the internet like I that's where I learned it was a thing that's where I saw people doing it and talking about it and I think that it's just kind of you can find yourself in these really dangerous situations and cyberbullying as well and like you know you get people coming onto your stuff and telling you to self-harm and if you're a young person that can like get to you and drive you to a point where you do. 17% of all people who have been cyberbullied have considered suicide. It's just so, <laughs> it's so awful, you know? And I think truly the internet can really help. Like I found like a, a support community on the internet and they really helped me get through a lot of stuff. But at the same time, it's also was making me a lot worse for a while because you can find yourself in these really toxic toxic communities and not realize how dangerous they are and not realize that you're all encouraging each other to do these terrible things and you're normalizing it and it's so dangerous because there are so many different sides to it but you know if there are people not listening to you in real life and your families aren't taking you seriously you can sometimes find this community of like depressed teenagers who end up normalizing and encouraging these toxic behaviors and it's like you don't realize it when you're in it when you're a part of these communities you kind of convince yourself that it's helping but it's not I promise you that it's not if you find yourself in these in these communities where you have these like venting accounts and you talk about self-harm and eating disorders and people are posting photos of self-harm and things those aren't good communities to be in I promise you no matter how much you're telling yourself they're helping it's not helping it's not. Please get out of that community if you are in it. Go to the recovery side of the internet. It's so much more positive. The The energy that you put into your life is the energy that you're going to receive. And when I switched from being in like that sort of depressed, everyone's sad and talking about killing themselves area of Instagram and I moved to the recovery side of Instagram, I instantly, massive change in how I was doing and in my recovery process and how well therapy was working. It's incredible the amount of difference it makes based on the people that you are around and the energy that you are around. It's like looking at like a magazine or Instagram accounts with like models who are all this like ideal body type and stuff. It decreases your self-esteem by 30% after being on it for less than a minute. And it's just the energy you have around yourself really impacts it. And I think that that's another huge issue, right? If your parents aren't believing you, your parents are meant to be people that you look up to and they're meant to be people that support you and are there for you and care for you. And when they tell you that you're making it up, you start, you know, you listen to your parents and you believe them. And so you start convincing yourself that you're making it up. And that's where you invalidate yourself. Like you'll, you'll, something will happen and it'll make you really anxious and or it will, it will like trigger you and you'll get really, really upset and really anxious and really depressed. And if someone's telling you that you're overreacting, particularly if it's someone that you look up to and they and they say, no, you're overreacting, stop being a child, grow up or anything like that. You're going to tell yourself that that's what you're doing. You're going to convince yourself. You're going to be like, oh, well, I'm overreacting, obviously, like 
I need to grow up, this is so stupid. And you start invalidating your emotions. And that is so dangerous and it's so sad and it's so scary as well because like everyone experiences something differently and just because someone else doesn't feel anxious because of something does not take away your right to be anxious because of something. If you feel a certain way and no one else does in a certain instance, that is fine. That is normal. That is human. And if someone is telling you that that is invalid, I am so sorry. It's so easy to convince yourself of that. And then you get stuck in this cycle and it just makes it all worse because if you're telling yourself you're overreacting it just powers itself and that makes it worse because it's giving your depression your anxiety your whatever mental illness it is it's giving it power over you because it's telling you that it's telling you it's powering these negative thoughts that you're having by telling you that you're stupid or annoying or childish or any of those things and it starts this big awful cycle where whenever you feel a very normal valid emotion you invalidate yourself for it and it just goes on and it just makes it worse and worse and it's just so it's so awful it's so awful and like there is no benefit absolutely no benefit to someone telling you that your emotions are wrong they don't gain anything at all so if you are if you are someone especially if you're a parent right like if you're telling your child that they're being ridiculous and wrong and that their emotions don't matter, you are just pushing them further into this thing that they are struggling with and you're isolating them and telling them that you don't wanna talk about it. You are basically enforcing the idea that their emotions are invalid and you don't wanna hear about it and their struggles don't matter, which in turn forces as it gets worse and to the point where if they're becoming suicidal they're not going to tell you about it because you've told them that it's stupid and that it's overreacting and that's dangerous because if they don't feel like they can talk to anyone and they feel like they're exaggerating they're not going to tell you <laughs> and if they don't tell you you can't help the situation you can't stop them from taking that step you can't do anything and you see it with so many so many young people who attempt suicide or who do commit suicide you know, the people around them will always say, well, they were, they were so happy, they were so fine, everything was good. But it wasn't. You're just ignoring the warning signs or you are, you are telling them that they are invalid emotions and that they are invalid signs and that, you know, you're forcing them to pretend that they're okay because you are showing that you won't listen if they aren't. You can prevent that from happening. You have the power to, to help your child not get to that point by just listening you have the power to prevent your child from getting to that point not all the time but a lot a lot a lot of the time you know we can drastically decrease this by if you just raise your child in a way where you tell them that you are there for them and you accept them and that their emotions are valid that is going to help if you tell your child that they can always talk to you and you enforce that and show that and when they tell you you know i'm feeling upset this really upset me and you say okay that's fine i understand feel free to talk to me about it and you listen that's all you have to do you just have to listen and tell them that it's going to be okay and that you believe them and if they ask for help like if they say that they think they need medication or they want to talk to the doctor because you know they think they might be depressed don't deny them of that don't tell them that they're overreacting because chances are that they aren't. You aren't in a position where you're able to tell your child, no, you don't have depression. That is not something you are able to do. You are not a doctor. You aren't allowed to do that. You aren't inside their head. You can't see what's going on and you have absolutely no right to tell your child that they aren't struggling. None. Everyone experiences things differently and just because it's not something that would upset you doesn't mean it's not something that's not going to upset anyone else. Most teen suicides that are successful are boys. Male, male suicide, male teen suicide is higher than female teen suicide and a lot of that comes from the idea that boys are told that they aren't allowed to be vulnerable. That being vulnerable is weak and emotions are a feminine trait and they need to man up and just get over it and these things that they're saying upset them and affect them shouldn't and that is so sad and so problematic in so many ways if you 
tell your child they aren't allowed to express their emotions because of their gender. That's awful. It's so awful. Men are just as able to suffer from mental illness as women. Mental illness has nothing to do with being weak or with being strong. It's a chemical imbalance in your brain and your gender has absolutely nothing to do with that. And by telling boys they aren't allowed to express themselves and they aren't allowed to be vulnerable or emotional and they have to bottle all of that up, that is going to tear them apart. Men feel like they have to be something, they have to prove themselves, they have to be strong in order to be valid and accepted. And that's just awful. Not only does it mean, you know, they feel like they can't confide to their family, but they struggle to confide to their friends because they want to be accepted and they want to be a part of something. And there's a lot of bullying towards, there's a lot of bullying in schools towards boys who show any sort of weakness and again it's preventable by just eliminating the stigma that boys and men aren't allowed to be vulnerable and they aren't allowed emotion because over time it builds up which is why the highest the area with the highest suicide rate is men between 41 and 50 because over time the pressure builds and it just gets too much men struggle too and they are allowed to struggle and it is valid if they do and just because it's something you don't think they should be upset by doesn't mean it's not something they are upset by and the fact that there are so many men who struggle and they're telling each other to man up and to get over it because they want to be accepted and they they want to seem you know there's there's this power dynamic and everyone wants to be the strongest everyone wants to be the the bravest and accepted and there's this whole stigma around you know women not wanting to date guys who are weaker and you need to be strong and you need to be the earner of the family and you have all these responsibilities to be in charge and you're not allowed you can't be in charge if you're emotional and I think that that is just such a toxic mindset and it really does drive people to this point of hopelessness and feeling like they aren't able to fulfill that you know, if you're told that your role in society is to be strong and to look after people and it's a lot of pressure. And of course, it's really easy to feel like you aren't able to live up to that pressure. And I think gender should have nothing to do with that. Regardless of your gender, everyone is allowed to be emotional. Everyone is allowed to express themselves and be vulnerable. And parents, if your son confides in you and tells you that he's struggling, the last thing you should be doing is telling him to get over it. The last thing you should be doing is telling him that that makes him weak. The last thing you should be doing is invalidating those emotions and saying that men don't struggle because they do. Another large contributor to things like suicide is sexuality. A lot of people really struggle to accept their sexuality, particularly in a household, you know, where they don't feel like they're accepted. And I think, again, there is no benefit to not accepting your child. There is no benefit to not accepting someone for loving who they love or for being who they are. By telling anyone, let alone your child, that you don't accept who they are or that you don't believe who they are, you are driving them again to this point where they can't accept themselves. The highest amount of people who self-harm are bisexual women. Over half of all bisexual women will partake in self-harm at some point. And I think a lot of that comes down to the lack of acceptance within the both the LGBT community and also the straight community. There's a lot of bi erasure and biphobia and a lot of people have internalized biphobia because it's this big thing of we're constantly invalidated for our sexuality. Uh, and parents, I've heard a lot of stories from a lot of people saying their parents will accept them if they're gay and they'll accept them if they're straight but they don't believe in bisexuality and they'll insult their children for being bisexual because it's greedy or it's not a decision and they need to make a decision and make a choice and it's not real and it's just this big messy thing that causes so many people to struggle with it and feel so confused and we just need to accept everyone for who they are really there is no benefit in telling someone you don't agree with who they are there is no benefit in telling someone that their sexuality or gender identity is false there is no benefit at all to not accepting someone for who they are and using the correct pronouns or accepting who they love. Who someone else chooses to be makes absolutely no impact on your life at all. And by telling them that you don't accept them or you don't love them or that they're invalid 
you are driving this and validation that they have already and they're probably already internalizing and struggling with and you're driving them to a point where they feel so alone and isolated and unaccepted that they might take this next step. Another thing that is often overlooked are eating disorders. Approximately 3% of all teenagers have a diagnosed eating disorder and the number would be higher if more people seek to help or we're able to. This is particularly dangerous because eating disorders have the highest self-harm rate, the highest suicide rate, as well as in its own thing, it hospitalizes people, it kills people, it stops people's hearts, it makes you infertile. It has so many negative impacts that can impair your life indefinitely. And I personally have had experience where I went to a doctor and they said to me, oh, it's just normal teenage girl stuff worrying about what you eat. And there are so many people who say that you see a young girl not eating and people are like, oh, just girl things, you know? And it's so, it happens so regularly and it's not taken seriously. And people don't realize that they have an eating disorder because they think that it's normal and people will be dropping weight so fast and they get praise for it. And it just encourages the cycle to keep on going. And Eating disorders are the most overwhelming thing. You completely lose your sense of self and become someone that you are not. And it's not taken seriously. People feel like they have a place to comment on what your body looks like and what you're eating. And it just drives this. I am gonna make a whole video about eating disorders because it is such a big topic. I just wanted to mention it in here because a lot of parents don't take it seriously. A lot of people don't take it seriously. And it is killing thousands of people. It's more than just wanting to lose weight it's that's the smallest part of an eating disorder and they are so misunderstood and they are hurting so many people overall mental illness should be taken so much more seriously and anyone confiding it it's so hard to confide in someone and open up to someone it is so difficult and if you've built up the strength to open up to anyone and they tell you that you're making it up or they tell you that you're exaggerating, it just starts this, this awful cycle. If you are someone who is struggling with mental illness, um, diagnosed or not, if you are struggling with anything, just being down all the time, suicidal thoughts, self-harming, and you're scared to tell someone, I'm really sorry. If you have told someone and they don't take you seriously. I am really sorry. If you have told someone and you have a support group and you are working on getting better, I'm proud of you. I'm really happy that you have found a support group and I'm so sorry that you are dealing with all of this. If you are struggling, it sucks. It's really hard. It feels isolating and you can feel like you're absolutely falling apart. It can be so loud in your head and it can hurt, like physically hurt. It is such a difficult thing to go through and it is so easy to feel alone. Just know that you aren't. There are so many people out there who are struggling. There are so many people out there who love you and support you and believe you. I believe you. I, and I hope you know that. I believe you, I support you, and I believe in you. If you're in a household where people don't believe you or you are afraid to open up because you're afraid of the response. I hear you, I believe you, and what you're struggling with is real. And you are allowed to feel things the way that you feel them. The way that you experience things is valid. The way you respond to things is valid. You are the only one who can feel your feelings and you are the only one who can experience your thoughts. Just remember that all the thoughts that you have are just that, they are thoughts and they have as much power as you give them. You are not worthless. You are not annoying. You are not any of the, the negative things you might be saying to yourself or other people might be saying to you. You have a purpose and it doesn't matter if you don't know what that is yet. It doesn't matter if your purpose is to just exist. If you are struggling, I do really recommend seeking support. If you can't talk to your parents about it, check if it's a possibility to go to your school counselor, try to go to your doctor. If you're able to do that without parental consent, I don't know the laws everywhere um, and how old you have to be. Or can you ask your parents to take you to the doctor 
and talk to the doctor about mental health if they aren't in the room. I personally find therapy helped me so much and I want everyone to be able to get that same experience. Remember that you have to want to get better. You have to want to help yourself. You can't rely on someone else completely helping you because that's not how it works, unfortunately. You have to put energy and effort into helping yourself. And it's difficult. It's really fucking hard. It's so hard. But it is achievable. And if you need a support network, me and my friend Kat actually created a Discord group, uh, which... You know, it's just a bunch of people who, it's just a big community and a big family where you're able to talk to each other and seek help and seek advice and just make friends and not be alone. And if you wanted to join, I will put the link in the description because no one should have to feel alone and no one should have to feel invalid in any way and hiding who you are. It's a place where you're free to be yourself completely and I want everyone to be able to do that and I think everyone deserves to be able to get help if they aren't able to get that in their real life. I've also created a website that has a a forum where you can seek advice on anything and support each other and help each other out as well as ask any questions or celebrate any milestone no matter how big or small if you feel like you aren't getting any appreciation in real life and you feel alone and invalidated, I wanted to create a space where people can share and get advice and give advice and just not be judged at all. And so I've put that there for you as well. I'm going to finish this off by giving a little note to all parents. So feel free to show them this um, and I hope that it's helpful <laughs> at all. I hope that this video has validated you at all. Uh, and I hope that you can show your parents this and maybe get them to understand. But I also understand that that's unfortunately not always how it works. I've written down like a little script. <laughs> parents, if your child tells you that they are struggling, please listen. It is really hard and really scary to open up. One in five teenagers struggle with a mental illness of some sort. And one in six will self-harm. The chance of them lying and making it up are slim to none. There is absolutely no harm in talking to them about it. By ignoring it or telling them that they're making it up, all you're doing is making it worse. The rates of youth suicide are increasing year by year. Don't let your child be another statistic. Talk to them, listen to them, validate them, help them get the help and support that they need. Tell them that you're there for them. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that they can talk to you if they need to. Don't shame them for opening up. Don't shame them for having emotions. Let them be who they want to be and tell them that you support them and love them no matter what. You have one job as a parent and that is to look after your child. It is to make sure that they stay alive and by invalidating their struggles, you are decreasing the chances of that happening. Make them feel safe. Make them feel accepted. Trust them. Support them. Listen to them. Don't let them be another statistic. Don't let them become just a number. Don't wait until it's too late. And people who are struggling, I am so sorry that you are going through what you were going through and I want you to know that it does get better. It is hard. It is so, so hard and it can hurt every day to be alive. But look at you doing it. 
you are still alive right now. Today is your record for number of days lived. And every single day you smash that record. And if you don't feel like you want to be alive and you still are, you have to give yourself praise for that. Look at yourself and say, look how strong I am. I'm still here even though I didn't want to be. Acknowledge every success and every achievement, no matter how small, because sometimes the smallest of things can feel like the hardest thing to do. If all you were able to do today is exist, I am proud of you. I know that it's hard. Just know that you aren't alone. And I believe you. I believe in you. And I love you. Now with that, I think that I'm going to head out. <laughs> I hope this was able to validate you. I hope that you've learned something. And I hope, I hope that this has helped just one person. I hope that your parents listen. I hope that your friends listen. And I hope that you were able to get the help that you need and you deserve. If you want to join our Discord server and just have a massive family, there are currently 120 of us and it's just one big family where we all just love and support each other and accept you for who you are. If you need that or you want that, you are more than welcome to join. There is an area for seeking advice and getting validation and support. If that is what you need, that is there for you. If you just need friends, that is there for you. I'm in there every day and I will come in and tell you how much that I love you and appreciate you. Uh, so if you're interested in that, that will be linked in the description. There's also my website that I've created, which is thequeerkiwi.com. And on there it ranges from things like, there's a page where you can look at a bunch of organizations and you can donate to any of them. They're all for a different cause. There's also a page where I'll be uploading like things that are important that are happening in the world that I think we should be talking about and learning about. And the most important part, I think, is that I have a community tab where it's a forum with a ton of different places where you can go and you can ask questions and seek advice and share achievements and people will come on and they can offer their support and their advice and their validation. And by doing that, it's there for anyone else to see. So anyone else who might have the same question are able to see advice and hopefully be able to learn from that and get validation from that. I just wanted to create some communities and some spaces where people feel safe and accepted and loved and able to get support and not feel so alone. And I really hope that this is able to help people and I really hope that people do feel more supported because of this. All I wanna do is help you and support you and remind you that you are loved and you are worth so much more than you think you are. You are beautiful, you are amazing, you deserve so much love from yourself and from others. I love you. I believe in you. I know I've said that so many times, but I'm going to keep telling you until you believe me. You are amazing. You are wonderful. And I hope that you are staying safe. I hope that you are doing okay. Remember that it is okay to have bad days and it is okay to not be okay. You are valid. You are wonderful. I love you. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you on Wednesday for our next podcast episode. The link will also be in the description. And then again on Friday for a bit more of a happier video. So yeah, I love you. Stay safe. Mwah.